It is Tuesday, August 9th in the MLB, and I'm Austin from Calling Our Shot. And I'm Logan from Calling Our Shot. And we are back with our five best picks of the day. We got two game picks, two player props, one no in our first inning, and our hit streak parlay coming your guys' way. You guys already know what to do. Go down and hit that subscribe button if you if you already aren't subbed. It really helps Austin and I grow these channels. A lot of hard work goes into these videos. We can't do it without you guys in the community. And we've been on a great, great run. Yesterday was, you know, we gave back a little bit of one and two day. Bass to record a win. He cashes that pretty easily. Nationals first five run line. It was looking good through the first couple innings. Then, you know, Sanchez throws out a couple meatballs and two home runs. I'll do it for you. And then, oh, man. The no run first inning was uh, about as brutal as I could as it could get. A oh, solo home run, and wouldn't you guess that was the only run scored in the whole game. So one and two day, we're going to get back after it. We like this slate a lot more than yesterday. Only seven games late. Our hit streak parlay did end due to Pete Alonzo going over four, but we're going to keep getting into it. Like we've been saying, we're donating ten cents to every single for every single subscriber gained in August. Hit that subscribe button. We certainly would appreciate it. We hope to make some money, become a TOS All Star. Clicking that join button on the channel. And today we will have a prize picks parlay. If you sign up for prize picks using code cos get 100 deposit match up to 100 bucks there's also a link down below in the description you'll see that prize picks parlay in that pinned comment section down below and also we'll post it on twitter at call on our shop make sure you're following us but look we got five picks today no more of an intro what do you got for the people today yeah we've, we've got a, a full slate today and we're starting with with the first five a, a great game you know of the slate probably the best game of the slate going to diamondbacks versus pirates and i'm taking the diamondbacks Minus a half, first five run line. Now the odds on this one, I'm going to go ahead and put to, to be determined because as Austin's pulling up right here on Odds Jam, you don't have a whole lot of books for it, right? Like, I mean, FanDuel's at the minus 130. I think DraftKings also has it at minus 130. I don't know if DraftKings is showing up, but it's 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 pretty standard, like minus 130-ish right now. Now I have been tracking the line movement in this one, and it did open at minus 110 both ways so definitely diamondbacks are getting a lot of love and look at look at how this game was yesterday tight zero zero through five yesterday and then absolute no sweat for for anybody who had any sort of under in this one and i know a lot of people got burned by zach allen in the first five yesterday they're like zach allen minus a half yep that's what the first five run line we're picking you know you know what always happens in baseball the result that you wanted and that you rooted for happens the next day and i i think this is a classic example of it today the first five over under set to four and a half the full game over under set to nine after the pillow fight we witnessed yesterday the books are expecting a lot of runs in this game now could they come from our starter tommy henry who's 0-1, 7.2 ERA. Yeah, they, they could come from him. But you know what? That's that's not how baseball works. The guy with the 7 ERA is the one that goes and pitches a gem because it doesn't make sense. But Henry, five innings pitched four and runs in his only start this year. I looked at kind of how those runs came. He he gave up a sack fly and then a three-run home run. Okay, yeah, that'll do it. it. It makes your stats look bad. But as long as he's able to sort of keep this Pirates offense, you know, at bay, look, the Pirates offense, by no means a juggernaut. They they were shut out, obviously, uh, last night. And Pirates, 28th in runs, 27th in hits on the road. And, uh, you know, they're facing a lefty today. Pirates, not good versus lefties either. Pittsburgh, 28th in batting average uh, versus lefties, 26th in OPS versus lefties. Guys, got you, you're, you're kind of seeing the narrative here. Tommy Henry doesn't have to go out and pitch perfect. You know, he, he just has to pitch good enough not to give up the catastrophic, you know, three, four earn run type games, uh, which, you know, I think he's certainly capable of doing. Now, who are we facing today? We're facing Zach Thompson. Zach Thompson, mostly a fade spot for anybody betting against the Pirates, right? Three, seven, and seven earned runs in each of his last three starts. Two outings that didn't even give his chance a team uh, or his team a chance to win. 4.5 road ERA, 1.47 whip on the road. Not, I mean, you you see those stats, that, you know, his, his whip, that's, that's really high. L lack of control. Arizona's offense, not the sexiest on paper. If you look at it, though, 18th in runs, 27 in hits, but then increases to 10th in runs and 15th in hits at home. A lot better home offense. I think the Diamondbacks are going to be able to get up some runs in the first five. Thompson, three home runs uh, allowed in his last two starts. Diamondbacks can make him pay for missing pitches. Just take it from two guys that have taken some Diamondbacks nerfies before. We know they don't miss those pitches at, at home. They they nuke them. So hopefully we get some runs. And that's why we're starting with the Diamondbacks first five run line uh, as our first pick of the day. But Austin, what do we got for today? Yeah, so I'm going to be going and I will be unretiring from base props. But before I get into that, we're obviously talking about our hit streak prop. We're starting with $10 since yesterday failed when Austin Riley and Paul Goldschmidt counting on both those two fellas, minus 127. Hopefully we can get to day two, start rolling over that money and continue to build it up. And like I said, retiring from base props. 
And I'm going to a guy by the name of Vladimir Guerrero Jr. Over one and a half bases, minus 117 on Caesar Sportsbook. When we go over to Odds Gym, we see actually a couple other books a little bit more juiced, which is kind of, uh, I'm all for it. Sharper books all the way at minus 146. Now, let's talk about why we like Mr. Vladdy. Now, Vladdy and the Blue Jays. They're on the road again in Baltimore. They did lose game one of this series, and they're projected to be, I believe, minus 165 on the money line. But they're going to be facing Kyle Bradish today. And we do, like I said, we saw Vladdy go under in back-to-back games, one and a half bases. So I like this today. Now, Vladdy, he's two for three lifetime versus Bradish. Bradish, you see, 6.55 ERA, 1.65 whip. Hopefully, we don't get a lot of walks in there. But we do see, you know, Vladdy seen him a couple times, has two hits. Both of them were singles, which is fine with me. If you want to go out there and get two hits, I'm okay with that. Now, if you look at Vladdy. Platin 289 versus right-handed pitchers, slightly better than versus lefties. But you look at 39 of his 45 extra base hits this season. Those are doubles, triples, and home runs. I've come versus right-handed pitchers. He doesn't have a ton of plate appearances versus lefties, I believe 80 or so, but only about five or six uh, extra, base, extra base hits versus lefties. I like that we'll see uh, Kyle Bradish being a righty. And he's also hitting 304 on the road, much better than his 273 at home, obviously, like I talked about. The Blue Jays on the road in Baltimore today. And we're going to look at the pitches that Bradish is going to throw. Majority fastball, 52.6% a four-seam fastball, 25.5% is a slider. So that's about almost 80% of the pitches that we're going to see Vladimir Guerrero Jr. at the base, at the at the helm. And you look at Vlad, Vladdy's expected batting average versus those pitches, 338 versus the four-seam fastball. That's the best he has against any pitch. And the 289 versus the slider. Those are two of his top three splits versus any uh, pitch that Bradish could throw his way. So I really think Mr. Guerrero Jr. is going to bounce back. He's not going under one and a half bases and three straight. I think Vladimir Guerrero Jr. over one and a half bases. I really like it today. But Logan, what's your second pick for the people? Yeah, we're going we're going to a pick close to home, right? We're going to the Marlins versus Phillies game. I'm taking the Marlins run line plus one and a half versus the Phillies plus 100 odds. Uh, currently, your best value on DraftKings is Austin showing right here. Pretty standard though, sort of. It's it's sort of a very trappy run line, right? This is the return of Logan's line reading segment, right? Yesterday, unfortunately, I didn't get to line read because I didn't have a ton of lines and a short slate. But today, Marlins are getting a ton of respect, way too much respect on the run line against a red-hot Phillies team and their ace. Now, who doesn't love a good fade the public play? Like, I, I do. And in baseball, you, you really have to do it. That's where you're profitable. 91% of the money and 90% of the bets on the Phillies at the, at the time of recording this video. I'm sure that will probably go up throughout the day. I mean, everyone and their mothers just can't wait to just put Zach Wheeler and, and the Phillies in the run line in their parlays, right? You can't be scared in baseball to pick against hot teams either, right? Like these teams lose all the time. And, and I'm not calling a Marlins money line outright win, but I think this game could be a lot closer than people realize, especially, you know, considering the, the line strictly in this one, this isn't Sandy Alcantara pitching for the Marlins. Like it's Braxton Garrett and Braxton Garrett, 4.73 road ERA, a 1.1 whip on the road. Those are okay stats, right? No, nothing crazy, nothing catastrophic at all. But, you know, Garrett, what what is encouraging, right? Three hits or fewer and four out of his last five starts. It's going to be big against this Phillies team. Also, Garrett, only one home run allowed in, in his last three starts. Phillies, the, the Phillies love them some power hitters, right? The Derek Halls of the world that go, Bow! the Kyle Schwarbers that just put the ball in the seats. This is what the Phillies have been doing. And as, and as you know, as awesome as it is to rely on the home run ball that dries up a little bit all right right like i i love to fade teams that are hitting way too many home runs in my opinion philly's also hitting 400 uh versus lefties during the month of august can anyone say regression right like if they if, if they if they don't regress i i'll i'll be truly shocked so i think braxton garrett is actually in line for a decent showing today and who now who's who's on on the mound for the phillies right they're a zach wheeler seven innings pitched in each of his last three starts he's he's been really great a 1.58 era at home so you tell me why with the marlins hitting only 204 on the road in the month of august why are the books giving the marlins such the fish such a good chance well wheeler is susceptible to the home run right He's given up a home run in four straight starts, actually. And then and I went back to the last time these, these two teams played in Philly. Marlins, five home runs in three games at Philly this year. So could they get a garbage three-run blast or two-run blast off of off of Wheeler? Absolutely. It's in the realm of possibility. I mean, you don't think of the Marlins as a power hitting team, but you know what? Maybe they're full of surprise. Maybe they see the ball well in in uh in Philadelphia. And last point of note, Philadelphia, 20th in bullpen ERA. Miami, a little bit better. 17th in bullpen ERA. Look, if you don't like this pick, you're like, Logan, I absolutely won't touch the Marlins. Then don't. But I am, and I'm fading the public hard on this one. But Austin, what, what do you what do you got? 
So my final pick of the day, and it's going to be eerily similar to what you saw from me tomorrow, from yesterday. We're going to be going back to the Mets and their starting pitch. We're taking Carlos Carrasco to record a win, minus 113 on Caesars, or do you see minus 120 on DraftKings? This is under pitcher props. Now, I don't want. I wanted to give you guys two picks because I know some people can't bet this one, but I really do think it's a really good spot. And my favorite pivots, you could do a same game parlay of maybe the Mets win in the first five and then probably win the full game, or you take the double result, which is the same exact thing. That should be around minus one forty ish, I would think. But look at Carrasco, twelve and four. 3.82 ERA, 1.27 WHIP at home, but even better, a seven and one record in his 12 starts, 3.41 ERA, and the Mets have been pretty hot as of lately. But we do see Carrasco his last start; he did give up three earned runs, so I do think he bounces back today. And we've talked about the Mets gigantic favorites again today. That's why we took Chris Bass yesterday. It was a little bit of a sweat bet, but we look at the Mets; they've won nine of their last 11 starting pitchers recorded to win in all nine of those starts. They even won yesterday with Alonzo and Lindor, both going hitless. So the two guys that are really at the top of that lineup that they need kind of to run up some runs didn't do much yesterday. Didn't really help them at all. Pete Alonzo came up with the guy on third with one out. Didn't get anything done. So I think those guys will have better days today, and they're going to be facing a guy by the name of Mike Viner. He's been a fade spot all year long. He's lost six of his last eight starts, 6.19 ERA, a 1.50 whip. He's really been struggling, giving up two, three earned runs in all of his starts. So they can get a couple runs up on him. Carrasco can pitch well. They get us to the bullpens. Mets, like I talked about yesterday, 11th best bullpen ERA in the MLB. The Reds have the worst bullpen ERA. We saw the Reds get a ton of base runners yesterday. Couldn't do anything with it. I doubt they have as many base runners today against Carrasco. So I really like him to record a win. I think it's a really solid bet. I'm going to be taking it. We'll be riding this to Carlos Carrasco to record a win in that game. But, Logan, I think you know what time it is. It's Nerfy Nation time, and boy, oh, boy, do we need to bounce back after yesterday. Terrible, terrible yesterday. So it was just mm -hmm. comical how bad it was. It would have been the quickest no one first inning we had had in a minute. But today we're going to a game we've actually already talked about. And that will be the Phillies and the Marlins. No one first inning, minus 124 on Barstool. Look, if the Marlins want to go out there and get us a run in the first inning, we won't be too, too mad, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game like Logan's already talked about. We do see minus 124 on Barstool, the best odds. Now, why do we like this one? Like Logan talked about, Zach Wheeler on the mound, and that man has to have a Nerfie Nation flag in his house somewhere because that man's 19-1 and one on no one first innings this year, been absolutely dialed in. Miami, just 28th in first inning runs, and Miami – Knock on wood, they've nerfed in eight straight games. So I really do think Wheeler can get me those first three outs. Obviously, you've talked about who's on the mound for the Marlins, but how has he figured in first innings? Yeah, Braxton Garrett, nine and two on nerfies this year. The Reds were his kryptonite. Those he had a couple nerfies against the Reds, but I, I, Braxton Garrett is more than capable pitcher, right? Philadelphia, seventeenth in first inning runs. So I mean, look, it, the the way I look at this is it's a lower scoring over under. Everyone and their mother just loves the Phillies, wants to try the Phillies. It's the squarest pick on the slate. I think this is going to be a low-scoring game, and, and I really do love the, the nerfy in this one as well. Yes, we don't normally double dip because if the Phillies score in the first inning, run Garrett out of there. Yes, that's a quick 0-2. But I think this one stands for a really good chance on the slate of cashing. Austin, nerfy nation, bounce back edition, hard after the disgusting beat we had yesterday. Yeah, we're waving these flags so you can bet on that. Now well, let's move into our parlay of the day that we post on Odds Jam. We appreciate you guys, as always, for clicking that link, showing Odds Jam all that love. But – Probably they will be Blue Jays minus one and a half and Braves minus one and a half plus 300. You can hear exactly why we like both those two uh, two game picks. Just go check out our Odds Jam Parlay. Top link in the description. Like I mentioned at the top of the video, Price Picks Parlay coming soon. Check it out. Check use code COS or the link in the description for 100% deposit match. That Price Picks Parlay should be live later on this morning. We appreciate you guys as always for tuning in. Austin and Logan, we'll catch you guys again Wednesday morning. We'll see you guys then.